Dark Circles Productions. talk about deaths in police custody and according to the internet it says that death in British police custody no convicted officers since 1969 now can you believe this Angela that no officer has been convicted of the Metropolitan Police there have been 800 and plus deaths in police custody and in 2006 Mikey Powell and Robin Goodenough and these are just a few names that I'm going to list here. Um, in 2011, there was Ian Tomlinson. And there's, in 2013, Jimmy Mabenga, Azel Rodney in 2013. Yeah, more recently, we had Mark Duggan. He was killed on the street. And there's still a campaign going on. His family is still fighting for justice. Who was the real Mark Duggan? An innocent family man wrongly targeted? Or a violent known criminal? According to the police, he was the senior member of a notorious gang. Mr Duggan was involved in gun crime. They were considered the most violent people in London. But his family say the intelligence against him was flawed. We've wanted to know what happened. We've wanted the truth. His death led to accusations of a cover-up. And the consequences were felt across the country. The worst riots in living memory quickly spread from Tottenham throughout England. Why are you out on the streets here tonight? Basically, the police are being what, abusive. They don't like black people. In a week of violent chaos, five people were killed. Thousands were arrested and imprisoned. And this evening, there were warnings of further unrest, as a jury found that Mark Duggan was lawfully killed even though they were sure he did not have a gun in his hand when he was shot. We are not giving up. No justice. No no justice. justice. According to the internet for the Justice for Mark Duggan um, campaign, Carol Duggan, who is Mark Duggan's aunt, um, it says on this headline saying, answers as Ministry of Justice loses file on Mark Duggan's death. Now, what is going on? Uh, Losing a file? Disgraceful. In August 2011, three separate police units were following Mark Duggan as he travelled in a taxi through Tottenham. According to Met Intelligence, he had collected a gun from his associate. Kevin Hutchinson Foster was later convicted of supplying Mr Duggan with the weapon. But crucially, the inquest heard that officers never actually witnessed the exchange, but responded as if they had, forcing his taxi to stop on a busy main road. Mr. Duggan was shot twice as he got out of the silver Toyota people carrier. A passerby filmed the immediate aftermath. The officer trying to resuscitate him, known as V53, was the same officer who had pulled the trigger. The jury decided by a majority of eight to two that the killing was lawful. Officer V53 testified that he honestly believed Mr. Duggan had a gun. It's like a freeze frame moment. The only thing I was focusing on is the gun. He said he fired twice because the suspect raised the gun towards him, but the jury found Mr. Duggan didn't have a gun in his hand at the moment he was killed. And he had a gun. That was the main thing. Uh, apparently, he got apparently, because that's, that's, it's a strong debate about whether there was a gun on him or not. This is the thing, I mean. Yeah. The gun was found some 20 feet away from Mr Duggan's body. During the inquest, officers denied under questioning that it had been planted. During the inquest, the judge strongly criticised what he called the stark problem of evidence given by some officers, evidence contradicted by this eyewitness video. 
Three officers testified that the weapon was found on the other side of the fence, yet the video footage shows it couldn't have been found at the time they said it was. The jury decided Mr Duggan threw it onto the grass verge. The family believe the intelligence was flawed, and the jury criticised the Met's handling of that intelligence. In the hours after his death, reporters were briefed that Mark Duggan was a violent gang member. The IPCC admitted to wrongly stating that Mr Duggan had fired first in a shootout with the police. Three days after Mr Duggan's killing, his family led a peaceful protest to Tottenham Police Station. They wanted to know why the media was being briefed about the shooting when they hadn't even had an official visit to inform them of the death. That anger led to days of rioting and millions of pounds worth of damage to the economy, costing homes, businesses and lives. Many believe it also caused irreversible damage to police community relations. It's now clearer that two bullets discharged at the scene came from a police weapon, and in particular the one lodged in the police radio probably came from a police issue firearm. A replica weapon was found at the scene, and the family want to know if it was found inside the vehicle in a sock. There is a lot of inaccurate speculation. The police uh, have not been able to provide the details of that investigation because it is an, it's an independent investigation by the IPCC. However, the IPCC have made clear their findings thus far now, I think last night, there is no question that this was an execution to start. Well, they're rather to look shameful than have the truth be heard. Mm. It, it's obvious, isn't it? They're rather to take a shame blame than to have the truth heard. But five days into their inquiry, the information vacuum means that conspiracy theories are growing about how Mark Duggan died. The IPCC are appealing for witnesses, but suggestions that a bullet which was lodged in a police radio was one of their own and had not been fired from another weapon has raised more awkward questions. But people who live nearby told me that a police surveillance vehicle had been filming the road for several days before the shooting. They claim to have seen armed plainclothes police hiding in bushes nearby and say the taxi in which Mark Duggan was a passenger was taken away from the scene before being brought back later for more tests. In Ferry Lane, the police performed what they call a hard stop. As Mark Duggan lies dead on the pavement, you can see that officers are standing on the other side of the fence. One firearms officer in a white t-shirt goes round and bends down towards the ground. A non-police firearm in a sock is said to have been recovered from the scene. The weapon didn't have any of Mark Duggan's DNA, blood or fingerprints on it. The IPCC has expressed frustration that it can't compel the 31 officers who were there when Mark Duggan was shot. It's, it's beyond me. It's disgraceful. The police are to be ashamed of themselves. It's happening too many times. The aunt of Mark Duggan, who was shot dead by police on the streets of Tottenham in August 2011, is demanding answers from the Ministry of Justice. Mark Duggan's family had hoped that their day in court would come with the inquest. But tonight they left court saying that there had been no justice and that they had found no peace. Now, as you said, Dana, I just can't understand. It's disgraceful, actually, that this has happened. How can the file just disappear? Honestly. What do you think? We'll never know now. The file's just mysteriously disappeared. We've been kind of, you know, conveniently disappeared in the post. I can't believe the Ministry of Justice put that in the post. I thought they would have sent it via courier. What do you think, Angela, about this? Files do go missing, but they should have something, on, you know. On exactly. Be a backup of that's some right. sort, you know. Okay. You can't just tell us that the file has gone missing and that's it. I can imagine it's upsetting for the family. It's lost in the post, you know, it's someone's head needs to roll for them. Because if, you know, if I'm running a police department and we're investigated on a serious issue like a shooting on the street, I mean, the police don't even carry guns, you know what I mean? So someone gave the order to shoot that man in the street. So his head needs to roll. I had an experience of um, being in a robbery and we called the police and they came with truncheons. So what I'm saying now is that Mark Duggan was killed. That means somebody went there with a gun because you know, police don't carry guns. Well, the Operation Trident was involved in Mark Duggan's death um, and they are armed. But my question is, I really want to know why was Trident set up? Because I don't see any other operation set up by the Metropolitan Police for any other race. Mm. So is, is it just black people and black people killing themselves? Is there any other race getting involved in guns and drug crime? I, 
I, I can't presume that it's all black people being involved in these crimes. What it's do you think? not. It's not. But uh, it's majority of the crime that, that are committed are committed by black. So I think that's why it was set up for black, black and black crimes. But I don't necessarily believe that because I think the press have a lot to do with these things, and it's what they portray or put in the limelight. So I don't really believe that because there are other races that are committing crime. So I don't see why a special task force was just set up for, for black, black youths or, or for black people. I just don't see it. What do you think, Angela? I think it was set up to try and stop the black on black crime. Yeah. So a lot of the work was done undercover. So, you know, they'd get into the communities and they could see who the troublemakers are. And some of the officers were black. So, you know, so you could see what's going on because they wouldn't know you was automatically a policeman. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why it was set up to try and get a, an inside view of you know, gang street culture and things like that. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I don't believe black people are just doing crime. It's I don't no, know, we're, not, we're, black not, people. we're not saying that it's it's just black people are doing crime, but it seems to be the majority because uh, what statistics show, and if you're going to take that into consideration, yes, there is a lot of black and black crimes out there. For every ten crimes that committed, m murdered, stabbing, and that, I would say at least seven, seven and a half is done black and black. Wouldn't you agree? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I would, and these statistics, I, I don't believe, who, who makes these statistics? I don't believe these statistics at all. You know, working in the government myself, I've seen how statistics have been fiddled mm -hmm. to look a certain way. So I don't believe in these statistics, really. And I, I believe they've set up the, the Operation Trident, but there are other races that are committing crime also. There's a lot of people coming from Europe and they're, you know, committing a lot of crime. Is a task force set up for them? That's a fair argument, but when does Trident get pulled out? When there's a black crime? So if you if you take a step back and look at it, if if Trident was was set up for black and black, if there's not a black incident, then they wouldn't be called. Do you see what I'm saying? But Mark but Mark Duggan was mixed race, so I hear you. He's not he's not black. He's perceived to be black, I guess, which is is sad, but you know, um, because he, Mark Duggan was known to the police you know, and he's half black, yeah. Sadly, that's the way it went. But what are we going to do, though? Because some of the black boys are really troublesome. And what I'm going to say now is, why are they causing the problems? Why are they walking on the street with the knives? Why are they shooting one another? And, and I know this is going to cause another debate. I think it's down to parenting. I truly believe that, you know, it should start from home. You know, a lot of poor families, you know, they're not able to be with youngsters growing up. They've, they've been left to, you know, babysit themselves. And I think that's where the problems stem from, you know. I mean, when I was growing up, it was a community that raised a kid. Now, you know, you can't even talk to the kids. So, all right, we, we, we know that Mark Duggan was uh, seen as an a outlaw citizen, yeah, we're not denying that, but, you know, how in today's society you can have a file missing and an individual that has been investigated, that's been so long been probed by the police, that's been looking into, you know, for so long, you know, and it's just conveniently disappeared, it's beyond me. Yeah, it's convenient so that, that tells me that there's a lot of cover-up going on in that particular mm. case, you know, and it, it's wrong, because, you know, it, it doesn't matter how devious mark was you know he's still somebody's child and and you know people are left family members are left wanting justice you know okay mark is a troublemaker it's been perceived um or i say perceived there's no in fact take him into custody and give him a fair try you know but you know i think we'll never know we'll never know what happened there because you know, the file has gone missing and certain things we will never know unless they may find out 10 years later, like what happened with Stephen Lawrence case. But, you know, with all the cover up with the police and that, which was disgraceful as well. And, you know, poor Doreen Lawrence having to fight for her son. But, 
you know, at least she, she did that. But even then, all of those that were involved were not prosecuted for that. No, so, you know, all. the two were, but the rest of them weren't. And they were all involved in it. And even so. the ones that got prosecuted, it's like a slap on the wrist, really. You know, they came out laughing in, in the government's face, isn't it, really? You know. Yeah. The five suspects, at one time, arrogant, scornful and defiant. Neil Acourt, seen as the gang leader. Jamie Acourt, his younger brother. Luke Knight, the case against him collapsed. Gary Dobson gave conflicting accounts of his whereabouts. And David Norris, son of a ruthless London gangster. The Lawrences have been failed by the police, who, despite compelling evidence, chose not to arrest the suspects until two weeks after their son's murder. They believe the failure to seize evidence is the sole reason why none of the suspects has ever been convicted. In April 1996, their private prosecution against Gary Dobson, Neil Acourt and Luke Knight collapsed at the Old Bailey. A year later at the inquest, the five refused to answer a single question. Police had to protect five witnesses, men who'd been accused of involvement in the murder. But the subsequent McPherson report pointed its finger not at suspects, but at the police. I want this report to serve as a watershed in our attitudes to racism. The thing that I'm proudest of as Home Secretary was setting out Lawrence and the fact, I'm pleased to say, I was able to drive through the changes that, uh, that Macpherson recommended that has had the most significant effect on the British landscape of any of the things I did. Do it! The Metropolitan Police had been accused of institutional racism, that its structures and processes inevitably resulted in racist outcomes. We already know you were a user of knives mm. and handled knives very well and very efficiently. What we have now is a scenario of Neil A. Court, who is a knife user and who is racist. Put the two together and what do they come together in? They come together on the 22nd of April 1993 in the murder of Stephen Lawrence. That's where they bring you. That's where they place you. I mean, in your eyes, that may do. Not just my eyes. In the public's eyes. In the eyes, eyes of the almost way it's, everybody. The way it has been turned around. In the around. eyes of almost everybody. Yes. Your yeah. racism yeah. and your use of knives combine on the night of the 22nd of April, 1993, mm -hmm. on that appalling night when you stabbed, you were involved in a group which stabbed Stephen Lyons. That's what happened. It doesn't ring like that to me at all. It just is completely, it's not like that at all. I put it to you that you were one of the five youths who murdered Stephen Lawrence. Well, I am completely innocent. And there is no evidence, not, not one piece of evidence, to say that I was there or involved or stabbed Stephen Lawrence. Were you there when he was killed? No, I wasn't. I suggest to you that your memory lapse was really because you, you knew you were guilty. Mm -hmm. That was why you didn't say anything. Well, that's your opinion. You're on top of your opinion, mine. But I know they. What can. other What other opinion can you have mm -hmm. when you mix with friends who live in the locality who have a reputation mm -hmm. of carrying knives? Both of them have admitted to us that they carry <clears throat> knives before the murder of Stephen Lawrence. Yes. You yourself are charged on two separate occasions in 92 and 93 with incidents where somebody was stabbed. Mm -hmm. On both occasions you're picked out on ID parades. The reason you couldn't remember the Stephen Lawrence murder mm. was because you were guilty. That's, that's fair enough. You're insulted with your own opinion. And 99% of this country, in my opinion, believe the same thing, Martin. Well, what alternative as long as I know got? in my heart the truth, that's all that counts, in my opinion. That's all that counts for me. Stephen Lawrence was a black man who was stabbed to death by what an inquest jury described as a gang of white youths. I put it to you that you were one of the five responsible for Stephen Lawrence's murder. But that's your opinion. I put it to you that you were one of the five. Did you kill Stephen Lawrence? No, I did not. You're saying that if it wasn't <coughs> you and your friends, that there are out there five other boys yeah. in South East London who hate blacks, who use knives, 
and who happened to stab this young man very near to your house, who run away down a road that takes them towards your house, and you've no, absolutely no idea no. who they are. It's an amazing coincidence, isn't it? You can call it that, yeah. Do you see why the focus comes down to whether you were the person who stabbed Stephen Lawrence? Here's an individual with a reputation who's carried knives previously, carries knives after. Who's to say you weren't carrying a knife on the 22nd of April 1993 when Stephen Lawrence was murdered? Me. And as we can see, these deaths in police custody, the inquiries just don't go anywhere. Do they? Mm -hmm. they don't get justice, files get lost. Uh -huh. <laughs> Emotion overwhelmed a public meeting of London's top police officers and politicians this morning. Proceedings were stopped for a time when family and friends of a man who died in police custody disrupted proceedings at City Hall. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Guy Smith, has more. Please, please, please. The chairman of the police authority pleading with the public to be quiet. We have a rule about heckling in this chamber. There are members... But the heckling didn't stop. And then it got heated. I'm going to adjourn the meeting. I'm adjourning the meeting for five minutes. The anger was from friends and family of this man, Smiley Culture, the 80s reggae star who died from a single stab wound at his home in Surrey. Detectives were carrying out a search warrant. The independent police watchdog is now investigating how he apparently stabbed himself while making a cup of tea. This morning's meeting continued, but emotion of a different kind erupted. I've been on this table for 10 years, and I've been saying the same thing over and over and over again. This organisation needs to get better. It needs to get better in engagement and it needs to understand the links, OK? And there is a really, really strong link between the way in which the black community is policed and the kinds of demonstrations we see today. You cannot disassociate the two. Everybody in the dance line, I did get this time. Meanwhile, Smiley Culture was facing serious charges of drug dealing. How he came to die in police custody is still unclear, and his family say they need answers swiftly. As far as I'm concerned, it's a waste of taxpayers' money, all these inquiries, because, as you said, they never get anywhere, you know? And mm. it, it's, it's sad. Me shoulder and as them approach me start wind down me window Me a go tell you how me answer Every question them fire Whoa, whoa, what's the name then start? My name's Smiley Culture Yeah, where do you think you're coming from? Light like from seeing me mother What's the registration number the card? Then I can't remember What you got in the baby then start? Not can't say recorder Would you like to have a look? Shave like the man if we ask you answer Now take the keys out of the car and step out of the motor Me and my colleagues have got a few questions to ask ya You'll be on your way as soon as we get an answer As me come out to the camera I think I'm me a wonder What police officer could want with my call chaka what's, what's quite alarming for me is that Every debt in custody Well I say every majority debt in custody There's never a conclusion to it Or you hear that they take their life Their own life, suicide You know and uh, come on you know, even the ones that are not suicide, there's, there's, no, there's never a, a, a bottom line drawn as to how the death came about. Well, you know, there are no convictions, so it looks like the police are getting away with it. It seems to be they're a law unto themselves, really. Um, it's just terrible. It really is, in this day and age. What do you think, Andrew? Yes, it's not just happening in the UK, it's also happening in America. Right across the border. Yes. It's an international thing, isn't it? It's, it's quite sad. Well, I think a lot of these families, they're not going to get any justice. Um, you know, the police are getting away with it. Until they bring in those new measures, like body cameras and things well, like that. Angela, if you say that, it's like giving up hope. I, I don't want to think there's never going to get, you know, there's never going to be any justice. And I've just done some research, and according to The Guardian, um, it states that 32 children have died since 1990 um, as well in, in custody. So, you know, children, I mean, I, I was just thinking about this thing, this topic as adults, but children, I can't, I can't believe that. That's a real shock to me, especially when you're a mum like myself. It's just really, really, um, you know, it's really terrible. And what do you think about this? 
They say children, are they like 15 or? Yes, yeah. children. Yeah. According no, to the article, 18. Um, according to the children. article, yes. And they talk about here a 14 year old called um, Adam Rickwood who took his own life um, and he was in custody um, and he was only 14. They probably thought he wouldn't do it because what they do when you get arrested now, they take your bail and they take, you know, anything that puts you at risk. This, you know, we could go on and on about this topic, but, um, you know, maybe we could continue. Um, as far as I can see, the police are getting away with it, yeah? Mm -hmm. I don't know, we're going to have to bring in some special measures to make sure you can catch them out, find them guilty, get convictions. Unless you've got, like, you know, photographic evidence and things like that, I don't know if they're ever going to get any conclusions for these families, and I'm really sorry for them. I have to leave it there, ladies, and um, we'd like to say bye to you all and see you again when we discuss another topic on Real Women UK. Bye! bye.